This short video will show you how to scan and perform a PENG block. Uh, I have a few disclosures and again I want to give a shout out to the Complete Anatomy app from 3D4 Medical which I use for many of my anatomical illustrations. I also want to give a shout out to the Block It Like It's Hot podcast which I do with Dr. Jeff Gadsden. These three QR codes will take you to our HIP episode. So I'm going to cover the indications for a PENG block, the innovation of the HIP, some anatomy and sonoanatomy, give you some scanning tips and then finish up with a PENG block. So what are the indications for a PENG block? Well, in my experience, there are two main indications. For total hip arthroplasty, where we're slowly starting to gather an evidence base, and then an exciting area for hip fracture analgesia, where we're seeing more and more evidence of benefit for this motor sparing analgesic technique. Let's look at the hip innovation for the anterior hip. The most obvious nerve that most of us are hopefully familiar with is the femoral nerve. But in addition to that, we can't forget the obturator nerve and the accessory obturator nerve. That's all relevant for the anterior aspect of the hip. What about the back of the hip? Well, the back of the hip, there are some extra nerves that are involved. We've got the sciatic nerve, which has a contribution, the superior and inferior gluteal, and the nerve to quadratus femoris. But for the time being, let's focus on the anterior aspect of the hip. And what you'll see here is that there are important articular branches of the femoral nerve, the obturator nerve, and the accessory obturator nerve. And if we break that down into quadrants, you'll see how the femoral nerve is by far the most important of those nerves, but clearly those other nerves also have a role. Um, and if it were possible for us to provide analgesia for the hip without impairing motor function, wouldn't that be exciting? At this point, it's PENG block time. Now, PENG stands for the pericapsular nerve group, but also one of the lead authors on that paper happens to be Professor PENG. Let's have a look at the anatomy in a bit more detail now. If we zoom in here, what we're going to see is the anterior superior iliac spine and the anterior inferior iliac spine. Then we come around to the hip joint and we see the superior pubic ramus. And we're going to zoom in now that is the psoas muscle, the psoas tendon right in contact with the superior pubic ramus, and the faded out muscle is the iliacus. You can see the close proximity of the femoral nerve to those two muscles, and you can see that the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine, that superior pubic ramus, and you can see now where, if we perform a pain block where I'm about to show you, how it may catch all of those branches of nerves relevant for anterior hip innovation. So let's imagine you place a probe in the correct area. You'll see here this schematic diagram showing you the anterior inferior iliac spine, the iliopubic eminence as part of the superior pubic ramus, the psoas tendon, the iliacus, and then most importantly, nerves not to forget, the femoral nerve we, which we want to avoid. And what hasn't been shown on this image is if we were to have visualized sartorius in this image, between sartorius and tensor fascia lata lies the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So one has to always be careful when the needle is being inserted that we make sure we avoid these structures. So let's imagine how we might generate an image. So we plonk a probe carefully on the anterior superior iliac spine, and we can try and trace down the anterior superior iliac spine to the anterior inferior iliac spine. Then we rotate the probe so it aligns with the pubic ramus, uh, and we get that pubic ramus nicely in view, maintaining that little hump of the anterior inferior iliac spine. You can see the femoral artery pulsating away and right next to it, lateral to it, just lying on that body of iliacus will be the femoral nerve. And just above that iliopubic eminence, we aim to see that bright white hyperchoic component of the psoas tendon. And the whole aim of this pain block is to lift the psoas tendon up off the iliopubic eminence. Sometimes people find it difficult to, to, to scan and trace down from the anterior superior iliac spine. So this is tricky. This has now become my most favorite way to do it, to scan up from the femoral head. So we take a probe and we plonk it on the femoral head and then slide cranial. And you'll, at that point, you'll actually come up onto the anterior inferior iliac spine and the pubic ramus, and you can hopefully identify that bright white uh, psoas tendon lying just on that iliopubic eminence. What does it look like in reality? 
Well, here you can see a needle come in from lateral to medial. You can see the bony landmarks of the anterior inferior iliac spine, and the needle is just approaching that psoas tendon, that bright white hypericoic structure. As you make contact with the bone, you can kind of corkscrew your needle, uh, just to aim to get deep to that fascia. And as you inject local anesthetic, what you want to see is that psoas tendon being lifted up and out of the way. And as we inject local anesthetic, you'll start to see that process happening here. Small volume of dilute local anesthetic will lift the psoas tendon out of the way. Remember, we don't want to inject a large volume or certainly not a concentrated volume because we want to minimize the risk of any local anesthetic drifting up and catching that femoral nerve, which you can clearly see lying on the surface of the uh, um, iliacus muscle at the top of the image. Okay, so what are our medication options? Well, we tend to recommend dilute um, bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, or ropivacaine. Uh, and for pen blocks, the volume that we're talking about is somewhere between 10 to 20 cc's or 10 to 20 mils of local anesthetic. Okay, so let's summarize. So for our pen block, uh, we will tend to have our patient in the supine position. We mostly needle in plane. We use a curved transducer uh, and a needle length between 80 to 100 millimeters. Um, the typical dose and volume of dilute local anesthetic we use is between 10 to 20 mils. Those pearls and pitfalls. Visualize the femoral nerve to make sure you avoid it. Be cautious of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Contact the bone, but avoid an intramuscular injection because that can cause a, a motor block as it tracks up towards the femoral nerve. And if you struggle to track down from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the anterior inferior iliac spine, scan up from the femoral head. We hope you found this video useful.